Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Oz, and today another detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to start things off talking about some powerful thunderstorms that are expected to slam into the southwest of WA, including Perth. We'll talk about some storms over central west Australia into south Australia. We've got some storms forecast for Queensland from today onwards and also for New South Wales. We're also going to touch on the tropical forecast as well and see what is happening up there and all of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. The support on the channel lately has been much appreciated. But let's get stuck straight into things, the southwest corner of Western Australia. As you can see, over the past six hours, a powerful cold front has crossed the coast between the lines of Augusta up towards as far north as Geraldton and Calbarri, in fact, where some rainfall is being reported up there. And some rainfall was heavy at times between Durian Bay down towards about Bustleton, including around the Perth metro area. Funnily enough, my rain gauge, which tends to pick up the uh, most amount of rainfall in my local areas, only picked up 13 millimetres overnight. So let me know how much rainfall your uh, gauge has picked up as well in the comment section down below. But for me, this cold front has been relatively dry. Don't be fooled though, there is a severe weather warning for the uh, weather that's coming in behind this system here. A vigorous a low pressure system is expected to bring damaging and locally destructive winds to an area between Durian Bay right down towards Albany, including Perth and the Southwest Land Divisions, and then inland towards Southern Cross and Lake King. That's as far out further than Lake Grace, Catanning, Meriden, and those sort of areas into the central parts of the wheat belt. So this cold front here is strong and it is going to penetrate it deep inland. Let's take a look at this on a closer uh, scale right now. You can see the cold front made its uh, crossing of the coast at around 3 a.m. this morning on the southwest Cape. So it was a little bit later once it got down towards the southern suburbs of Perth around 5 a.m. It woke me up at about 6 a.m. Uh, that's when it crossed our local area. And then for Perth, it's been about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. And the cold front just now starting to ease off and head further inland. But yes, yeah, some good rainfall accumulations have been reported. Bickley, 20 millimeters of rainfall, and then a few spots of above 25 millimeters of rainfall around Dwelling Up and Jaredale. So all in all, this has been a good late season soak. And just to preface things, we're going to talk about some thunderstorms into the central parts of WA later on in the video. Uh, some severe thunderstorms out there, need I mention any more. They have been quite strong indeed, and we'll touch on those very shortly. But let's take a look at the rainfall forecast here and see what's in store for this cold front over the course of today. So in terms of the most amount of rainfall, it is most likely fallen at this time. The heavy falls are going to ease off, but later on today and into later on tonight, from about 2pm onwards, we're going to see this vigorous southwesterly shower pool uh, bring some pretty violent violent weather to the southwest capes, that sort of area. And this is going to bring some heavy rainfall, uh, locally uh, moderate to heavy falls, and some damaging and locally destructive winds, and some big waves. So let's break that down right now. You can see the low pressure system, 985 millibars here. At 2 or 3 p.m. local time, it's going to be south of Augusta. And once it heads south of Augusta, we're going to see uh, the southwesterly pool sweep up from behind it and impact communities between Northcliff up, including Augusta, Margaret River, Bunbury, Bustleton, uh, Mandurah, Perth, and about as far north as Durian Bay and Cervantes. Uh, the weather will be quite gnarly ed, indeed tonight, especially into the later evening hours into early tonight. It will start to ease off for Perth at around midnight or early 1am tomorrow morning, and it will be completely cleared out by the looks of things by daybreak tomorrow morning, but it's going to be a pretty wild evening and wild night. The severe weather warning is for damaging winds and uh, locally destructive winds along the coastline, so you know that they mean business. The Bureau of Meteorology very rarely issues destructive wind warnings, even for Perth. So we are definitely talking about some pretty nasty weather that's about to sweep through. Those wind gusts, let's talk about them right now. So wind gusts aren't expected to be too strong until later on tonight at around 7 or 8 p.m. when they will be at their worst, especially for locations between Cape Naturalist down the southwest capes uh, towards Windy Harbour, or aptly named Windy Harbour, and then across to Albany, where peak wind gusts will be in excess of 100 kilometres an hour and sustained for a couple of hours down there. Strong wind gusts will also be reported up the coastline uh, of the lower west, up towards Perth and Rottnest Island, where I'm expecting wind gusts to approach 100 kilometres an hour, but I reckon for Perth, it's just not going to be that strong. Peak wind gusts of around 70 to 80 kilometers an hour are possible, but I don't reckon it's going to get much more severe than that. This is a late season uh, weather system is to be carrying the amount of warnings that this system is uh, having. This is sort of May, June, July sort of weather. Very rarely do we see this post-September. So for this to be in early October, this is a very significant weather system here. And if this was happening in June or July, we would be talking about one of the strongest cold fronts of the year. Thankfully, though, uh, the winter season is just now coming to an end and these cold fronts are suppressed quite well uh, by the 
West Coast trough, but it looks like this one here has managed to squeeze through and is going to provide the southwest corners with some pretty severe weather later on this afternoon and evening. So yeah, make sure you are taking uh, extra care, especially if you're on the roads tonight uh, in that evening commute. Make sure you're taking it really easy, going nice and slow in the wet weather, uh, and get yourself inside as soon as possible. You don't want to be outside and in this weather here. It's going to be quite dangerous indeed. There is a risk of falling branches as well, and if you've got uh, unsecured furniture in the backyard, deck chairs, trampolines, there's also a risk if you live in an exposed location that they go flying so I'd recommend using this morning when the rain does finally clear off especially if you do live around the coast to just go and tidy things up and get them underneath some cover or stick them in the garage or something because we could be seeing things going flying. There's also the risk of small hailstones as well, so putting things that could break easily in the garage, but I'd reckon the hailstones would be small enough where they're not a risk to cars uh, or property, so I don't reckon there's anything that, they, well, it's not worth worrying about them. They will be tiny hailstones if they do fall. Uh, the chance of snow along the Peronga or the Stirling Ranger is pretty much a zero. It's not really worth talking about at this time. There is a very slim chance. I think the Bureau of Neology noted that there was like a 5 or 10% chance on Metai, uh, but at this time I really just don't see that being a possibility. It's just too warm at this time of the year, unfortunately. So it's going to be a snowless year for the Stirling Rangers, but we do get quite a few of those every now and then. But yes, yeah, severe weather, that's for sure. In terms of peak rainfall accumulations from now on from this weather system over the next 24 hours, it shouldn't be too much. Between sort of 10 and 20 millimetres possible around the hills, it will be wetter as you get further south down towards dwelling up Waruna, Australind and Bunbury. The rainfall accumulations could jump up a little bit there. Inland as well around Meriden, Southern Cross, Hyde and Lake Grace, that sort of area where the cold front is currently passing through, there'll be a further 10 millimetres on top of what has already fallen down there. And the south coast between Augusta across to about Albany or Bremer Bay even, we could be seeing some falls up towards 25 millimetres. For the Perth metro area, between 5 and 15 millimetres I reckon is a good number. There will be places that pick up more rainfall, and I reckon there could be places in the northern suburbs that pick up no rainfall from now on. But there's going to be a lot of showers coming through tonight, so I'd be surprised if places did remain dry from here on out there is uh, some pretty nice severe weather streaming through. Now in terms of wave heights as well, this is another threat that the Bureau of Meteorology raised. We're just going to cover everything. We're going to be talking about some pretty big waves later on tonight. And of course the Rottnest Ferry has been cancelled. I mean this is just dangerous stuff for the ferry to be travelling in. I think the immediate threat of monstrous swells has more or less passed. It's going to be those wind waves tonight which could reach heights offshore from Western Australia of about 30 feet or 9.5 metres. It's going to be quite nasty indeed. Rottnest Island, if you can safely get yourself out to West End somehow if you're an experienced cyclist or something uh, you'll be able to witness seven or eight meter high wind waves later on tonight that's going to be something to see that's for sure uh, but don't do it because that could be very dangerous just saying there are some big waves that are on the way now for the southwest uh, of Western Australia, it looks like it's going to be pretty nasty indeed. But yeah, I think those monstrous swells are just starting to ease off. It's now going to be a wind wave threat, and the wind wave's completely easing off for all, uh, areas north of Durian Bay by around early tomorrow morning, then clearing out of the southwest by around tomorrow afternoon, slowly easing off as the day goes on and this low pressure system clears out. Fortunately, we're going to get this um, massive swathe of low pressure and awful wintry weather replaced once again by a high pressure ridge, and that's going to return uh, the southwest to some cooler, calm a dry conditions compared to what we have been uh, experiencing lately and then after that into the later parts of next week we're going to see a low pressure trough develop down the west coast of WA as another cold front sweeps down across the south and that's going to provide us with some warm temperatures into the early to middle parts of next week but that's looking a little bit further off into the future. Now just before we finish up with Western Australia let's talk about some thunderstorms over the interior parts of Australia. We do have some pretty nice severe ones now on the forecast. You can see them here a lot of thunderstorms dancing across central parts of WA north of the goldfields and Mika Thara between Newman and then out towards Warburton. They'll be continuing to fire up all throughout the course of today and in fact they do get quite nasty later on tonight. You can see thunderstorms being pretty widespread this afternoon around Newman, Tom Price, and as far north as Marble Bar, and then inland out towards Warburton, and even maybe as far inland as Giles, down towards Rowena, and uh, some communities between Esperance and Eucla. But we're talking about very remote WA here, so really no... Uh, impacts to significant populations expected. The thunderstorms will continue their dance across WA and into South Australia by tomorrow afternoon and evening, completely clearing out by tomorrow evening, but it's not before they impact communities such as Udendata, Cooper Pedy, and Winterby with some much needed rainfall out there. These are thunderstorms in Central Australia though, so the rainfall is going to be very hit and miss and there's going to be more dry thunderstorms than not. So don't get your hopes up for heavy rainfall accumulations, but under the right thunder cell, up to 25 millimetres is possible from this uh, big line of severe 
thunderstorms that's likely to dance across WA and into South Australia. The main threat with these thunderstorms, if they do go severe, is the rain pipes up here. It's actually quite heavy now. Uh, is the um, damaging wind threat, straight line damaging winds, because they're most likely to be in the form of squalls. Uh, but apart from that, we're really not talking about large hailstones or heavy rainfall from these thunderstorms. So not too much to worry about. And in terms of peak rainfall accumulations between now and Friday morning, over the next 48 hours, we are talking up towards 25, 30 millimeters across central parts of WA. And that's if these thunderstorms do go ham. Like I said, thunderstorms, the rainfall is going to be very hit and miss, very unpredictable. And we're not expecting these to impact more than probably about 20,000 people either. Either. And we're talking about thunderstorms ex expected to impact about 10% of Australia's landmass. So uh, that gives you an idea of how remote we're talking about in central WA and into South Australia. Well, that's a lot of talk on WA, perhaps my biggest forecast for WA on this channel. So let's go over into eastern parts of Australia. We're going to finish this video off talking about some tropical thunderstorms expected into New South Wales and Queensland. So this afternoon, we are expecting a bit of a pocket of thunderstorms to fire up around Longreach and Charleville under some warm temperatures and humid conditions. And you're probably feeling it if you do live in this specific area here around Tambo and Charleville. There's going to be some warm temperatures today under the influence of a low pressure system that's just developing in the central parts of Queensland. Nothing's going to come of this. It's just going to be a bunch of thunderstorms popping up here. We could see the potential for some isolated severe thunderstorms. Just looking at how they fire up here, the chance of a supercell blowing up in this uh, mess of thunderstorms, it does look possible. Uh, and that will present the risk of some large hailstones damaging and locally destructive winds and some heavy pockets of rainfall. But I think it's just going to be a little bit too remote to be talking about at this time. The thunderstorm threat here, it's interesting, but it is a very hard forecast to make. And you can see nothing really has fired up already. We've got a lot of mo uh, warm, moist air feeding in from from the Queensland coast and some warm dry air feeding in from central parts of Queensland and some cool dry air from the southern parts of New South Wales in the wake of a low pressure system. So it will be perfect conditions for potentially severe thunderstorms in this pocket where the cursor is circling at this time. But it's a very difficult forecast to make. It's not often we see something like this fire up in Australia. This is more sort of a, uh, an American thunderstorm set up here. But just a heads up, potentially severe thunderstorms are possible and potential supercells are possible in central parts of Queensland later on this afternoon and evening between the hours of around at 2 p.m. and at 7 p.m. Uh, we're also talking about later on next week some thunderstorms potentially firing up along the New South Wales and Queensland coastline into the southeast of Queensland and the northeast of New South Wales, again with that onshore flow feeding in that moist air from the uh, Coral Sea and some warm dry air feeding in from Queensland. We could also potentially see some severe thunderstorms, but that's looking pretty far out into the future here. So again, we're going to have to take this forecast with a heavy pinch of salt, but you can see some thunderstorms firing up pretty consistently on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday the 9th, 10th and 11th of October respectively. And this is more of just a heads up that there are some storms now on the forecast in central and southern parts of Queensland and New South Wales later on next week. And that will just add to the thunderstorms that we're expecting throughout the course of today in terms of rainfall accumulations from the ones firing up in central parts of Queensland, which might I add do actually have a little bit of rainfall on the forecast around Tambo up to 25 millimetres. Once again, under the right cell, more than 25 millimetres will fall from this. We could be seeing up to 100 millimetres, but it's just going to be so specific and so isolated that it's really difficult to make a forecast here. But yeah, if you do live in this little pocket here between Charleville and Alpha, definitely watch the radar and keep an eye on the Bureau of Meteorology's uh, warnings page throughout the course of today because I would not be surprised if severe thunderstorms fired up in this little pocket. The environment is basically perfect for them this afternoon and evening. Now, as promised, let's just give a quick forecast on the tropics. There's a few showers streaming up into far north Queensland throughout the course of today, but nothing too heavy and only about 20 millimetres possible up there. And you can see 10-day rainfall accumulations do all in all look pretty disappointing across northern Queensland, the Northern Territory and WA. So I am, well, I guess, pretty unhappy to report that the build-up is going to continue and it's going to remain stifling across the Northern Territory, Queensland and parts of WA. The rainfall now really start to pile on, however, up in the far north of Western Australia with up to 70 millimetres is expected now across northern parts of WA from thunderstorms and the majority of that firing up into the middle and later parts of next week. You can see thunderstorms pretty consistent from Monday Arvo onwards. So uh, it definitely looks like the wet season is really starting to build up up there and result in some thunderstorms there. But for the Northern Territory, it's just going to remain boiling hot into the parts of next week. It's going to remain warm over Queensland as well. And there's no real rainfall on the forecast yet, but rumbles do suggest later on into October, we're going to see a much wetter change across northern parts of Queensland, the Northern Territory, and maybe even Western Australia if they are lucky, which is much needed because they're really starting to get into some dry weather up into the northern parts of Queensland. Daryl from Mount Carbine has uh, 
uh, advised us that there are water restrictions out there. Soil moisture values are still much above average across parts of far north Queensland and there is some rainfall that's just going to add to it throughout the course of today but it's really starting to dry up up there and you can see later on into the forecast period we're starting to get a few pockets of minor to mild drought like conditions develop across northern Queensland, parts of the Northern Territory and Western Australia as the rainfall now starts to go a little bit below average and we tend to start to see some thunderstorms firing up on a pretty consistent basis into the middle parts of October and that doesn't look like it's going to happen this wet season. Now I hope I haven't confused you, that did really sound quite confusing in my head and if I've got left you with unanswered questions and please do let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for all the support and the second iteration of the Big Wet Forecast. If you haven't seen it already, it is a must watch and I'm going to link it at the end of this video so go and give it a watch now. It is a 20 minute forecast and it <clears throat> sums up what we're expecting across tropical WA, the Northern Territory and Queensland, even into New South Wales throughout the course of this wet season. So it's a great forecast. So yeah, definitely make sure that you go and watch it. But that is all for me today. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and I could not run this show without them. So again, their support is much appreciated. That is all for me today and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.